This is I'm Stark, and in this video we are looking at differentiation from first principles. So this is basically a way of differentiating something. It's a longer method but sometimes a question may ask you specifically to do it from first principles. And this here is the formula that we will be using throughout and it is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now, the first question we have here is using the method of differentiation from first principles, work out the derivative of y is equal to x squared. And the derivative is basically this differentiated. Now, in order to do this, we are going to use the formula that we have at the top and put in x squared. So this means that we're going to make it x plus h and this will all be squared because of this squared here so if this was um, cubed for example our first thing would be x plus h cubed and then it will just be minus x squared because f of x is simply just going to be x squared, what we have here, because f of x is another way of saying y, what is y. So we can then put that all over h, and you don't have to do anything to that. And then we can simplify this further. So if we expand the brackets, we'll get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared. And again, this is all over h. Now again, we can simplify this. If you look at the top line, for example, we can see that we have x squared here and minus x squared there. So we can simply just cancel this and cancel this. We can also see that as now, all the top terms have an h in it and the bottom term has an h in it. So we can cancel this, cancel this, and then cancel the squared. So now we are left with 2x plus h. But again, this is not our final answer because in differentiation, we always want to make h as small as possible. So what we're going to do to make it the most reliable answer, we're going to limit h to zero. Essentially, this means that any term which has an h in it will not count as anything because it's zero. So essentially this is two x plus zero, which is just gonna be two x. So this means that the derivative of y is equal to x squared is going to be 2x. So the next question asks, using the method of differentiation from first principles, work out the derivative and find the gradient of y is equal to half x squared at the point 6, 14. So we're going to use exactly the same method as we did before. Um, and in order to do this, we'll do half. and it will be x plus h squared. Minus half x squared. So the real difference on this one is just using that half before. And if, for example, it was 3x squared, then it would be 3 before instead of a half, and 3 minus 3x squared there. And that is all over h. So again, we can simplify this, and that will be simplified to get half x squared plus x h, and then plus half h squared. And that will be minus half 
x squared. And once again, this is all going to be over h. And when you're looking at that, you can also see where you can simplify it. So again, that half x squared there can be cancelled with that there. And then we can cancel x there, x there, h there, and then the h is there, sorry. And then that will get x plus half x, half h. So x plus half h, and then we'll limit h to 0 again. which means that, that is just going to be equal to x. And that's our derivative. And in order to just find the gradient of this, we have to look back at the question. And we see that the point is asked for is at 6, 14. Now, this is the x, and this is the y. And we don't have to bother about the y as such. We would if we were finding out the tangent, for example. But just to, because we're finding out the gradient, we're just going to put... Um, substitute all x's for 6, which means that the gradient, and we'll say that the gradient is equal to m, so m is equal to 6. And it's that simple there. So this is the final question that we'll be answering today, and it's y is equal to x cubed plus 2 at the point 2, 7, and we have to work out the derivative and find its gradient. So in order to do this, we'll use exactly the same method. However, this time we've got an x cubed and a plus 2, which is something without an x in. So in order to do this, we'll simply do x plus h, and we'll cube all this, is a squaring, then we'll have the plus 2 in there, and then we'll minus the x cubed plus 2. And remember to put this last bit in brackets because it will be important moving forward. And then again, this is all over h. Now, this time we'll have to expand the brackets slightly harder because we've got an x cubed term, but this will go to x cubed plus 3x squared h. plus 3xh cubed h squared, sorry then plus h cubed plus 2 and then minus x cubed which is in brackets and then also this is in the brackets you'll minus the 2 instead of adding it on. And again, this is all over h. So once again, we can simplify this a lot more this time than previous ones. So we've got the x cubed there, cancels of that. Then we also have this, these 2's here, cancels there. Then we can cancel the h's, so this h here, this h here, and this h here which can go to h squared instead of h cubed. So therefore, our nearly final answer here is going to be 3x squared plus 3x h plus h squared. Now, again, we're going to limit h to 0, which means that we will simply have 3x squared, because 3x times 0 is, is 0, and h squared, um, if h is 0, 
that means that it's going, also going to be zero. So that is our derivative. And then again, to find out the gradient, we're going to look back at this. This time it's two, seven. Look for the x term, which is two. Therefore, m is equal to three times by two squared. And that is equal to three times four, which is equal to 12. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.